And welcome back to Block TV. Last I checked, I'm still Yale V, and it is time for Block Doc, where we are graced with the presence of Dr. Lionel Wahlberger, co-founder of the startup Platin. No one is better versed in blockchain than the good doc. That's why he's here with us. And this week, we're talking about the immutability of the blockchain and what it means for privacy, if there's any such thing still left. Earlier this month, it was reported that Google launched a new set of crypto and blockchain analytics tool. The tool will provide deep data sets for the top cryptocurrencies and aim to revolutionize blockchain search as the company did for, the, for information on the internet. But, um, doctor, is it a good thing? Well, Google is certainly a good thing for the internet itself. You can find things more easily. And now if you can find things more easily on the blockchain, there are things that are very interesting to look for. Like, for example, there are addresses that we call primary addresses or right. aggregated addresses, like an exchange might have a, an address like that. So Google's machine learning make it so easy to find those things that this will really simplify scaling the blockchain and understanding what's happening. That said, uh, there's a problem with blockchain and Google because everything done on the blockchain stays on the blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't stay actually on the blockchain. Sorry, stays there forever. Yes. And uh, don't forget, Google opens the door to finding all kinds of things. Like, for example, one of the first things a researcher did was use the Google tool to look for self-destruct. There are some Ethereum contracts that have a self-destruct, which is there to remove the contract and close it down. Right. And that's supposed to be locked down, so you can only do it from a certain private key. But he found hundreds of contracts that were open by doing that. And they were, they were open by doing that, and also, and I'm trying to, you know, I remember this um, incident, what was it, a, a few weeks ago, when pornography was put on the blockchain. Yes, this is, we don't want Google making that easier to find. So that was a very interesting episode. People from the beginning said immutability is a problem because you can't delete it. And what if right. you put something on there that's illegal or mistaken? And uh, everybody always talks about child pornography as the big voodoo item. Now, recently, BSV, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, made their own blockchain and they increased the size of what you can put there. So somebody put an image that is illegal into the blockchain and it cannot be erased. That's it's, it. It's, it's there. Locked it's there in. forever. Unless you hard fork, unless you take extreme measures, you cannot. It's immutable, as you said. Now, but let's talk about, you know, privacy. Because at the end of the day, if Google, you know, gets into this game and enables what you just described to us, you know, information regulation, how does that gel together with, you know, how does that work? Well, you know, privacy is a big challenge. Living a digital life, we leave digital exhaust all over. Uh, like if you've recently gone shopping for an uh, airline ticket. No, I, I, you know what, you're raising a, 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 the good point of, what, this is my feeling, this is my personal feeling yeah. about this. I <laughs> recently booked um, a ticket um, overseas. Okay, I'm not right. going to tell you where because okay. I want to keep my privacy. Right. Uh, but I was a minute after I did that, and I think even I, I hadn't booked it even yet, I just was looking for the information for, you know, a week I was inundated and every platform and every online essence that I have with ads, with, you know, with prices, with where to shop, where I'm going, with whatnot. Or firstly, I feel followed. But <laughs> that said, is there such thing as privacy at all? Can privacy in this day and age even be, you know, you know something that we, you know, we expect if everything is out there? So Tim Berners-Lee, who it literally invented the World Wide Web, is very upset that it became this tool of surveillance capitalism, like you're saying. If you look in your browser, there are certain ways you can check how many people are tracking you. There are sometimes 40 trackers or more. Exactly. And it's annoying because it doesn't even work very well. Like, you bought that ticket, but there was a ticket that I recently didn't buy. That's called an abandoned cart, and right. there they, they run after you even more surely because they think if they chase you with ads, you might buy it. So this is a known problem for a really long time. And there are regulations in place for that. I mean, yes, if, if the European Union acted strongly to much criticism on the American side, but they enacted what's called the GDPR. Excellent. The general, Remind us what it is. So the General Data Protection Regulation is a set of principles, and some of them, I think, are very sensible. So like you now, according to GDPR, can contact any data provider like Facebook right. and say, give me a copy of my data. That's reasonable. Uh, you can also say, delete my data. I was about to say, and that's the right to, um, th that's the right to forget, right? The right to be forgotten. To be forgotten. Well, it's related, because first of all, you're telling a service provider, give me my data. Okay, and now you're telling the service provider, forget that you knew me. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you realize, but in computers, once you write something to a disk, there, it's very difficult to delete. This got uh, people in trouble over the years. They delete it, but all they really delete is the pointer to the data, and right. the data still stays there. Right. 
Uh, if you really want to delete on a disk, you actually have to write over it. And a uh, military grade, you have to write over it hundreds of times. You write the number one, and then the number two, and then the number three. And that causes the magnetism to and really forget. And in blockchain, that actually becomes even more difficult, because the oh, whole idea, isn't yes, it? I mean, the whole idea of blockchain is everything right. is actually cataloged. We will know everything. And to me, that spells, okay, you will know everything forever. Forever. A right. catalog, uh, an immutable catalog, where each line is connected to the next line by mathematics that can never be broken. So how do you do GDPR on a blockchain? How do you delete? Uh, what they're doing now with the child pornography case right. is just uh, they're not looking at it. So everybody's going to agree that this block will not be inspected. Oh, good luck on that one. Right. I'm sorry, it's human nature. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like building a, a new layer on top, and it, it's very problematic. Now, when, but when it comes to the one way to possibly, you know, actually combat that, encryption? When you encrypt it, then you can't tell what's there. And that was people's first instinct. And it's a very good idea. So we have the blockchain, and it's immutable. Okay. Now, we want to write down maybe that you bought that ticket. Or in supply chain, we want to buy, write down that a product went from Brazil to New York. Or in Bitcoin, we want to write down that I transferred a currency to you. Exactly. Whatever it is we wish to write down. Let's say we don't actually write it down, but we scramble it, and we write down the scrambled version. We've solved one problem. The immutable thing, the thing that's out there forever, is not readable unless you can unscramble it. So we, we've made a step forward. Right. I mean, you think it'll ever be solved? I mean, I, again, it's just I'm harping on this because I truly think that our expectation for privacy is actually incredibly naive in as technology but advances. But we need to be private to be fully formed individuals. And I think the digital tools are catching up. So for example, with encryption, there was an amazing innovation by Israeli scientists, by the way called zero knowledge. And that enables you to encrypt and yet still know something. So wait, zero knowledge, which of course is, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, the way I feel every morning, but explain what, <laughs> <laughs> explain what it is. Yes. So zero knowledge the, the helps. Funny, the crazy words, because zero means zero, zero but knowledge, knowledge means is knowledge. Exactly. How, how do these two things come together? So. <laughs> Okay, but <laughs> that's, that's it. Zero knowledge. Besides every morning before Besides a cup me, of coffee. Yeah. What does it mean, zero knowledge? Explain what it means. So it's, what it means is that I, have, I know something, and I'm going to prove to you that I know it, and you can be absolutely certain that I know it, but I do not actually reveal it. It's, it's a little it's bit It's a kind confusing. of magic. Yeah. And where does it come into play? So uh, when you talked about putting scrambled information on the blockchain, right. we, we can put zero knowledge information, and that is more useful. Let me, let me explain for a minute with a kind of okay. uh, children's book. There's a children's book called Where's Waldo? Oh, yeah. Right? Have you ever played it? You open a page, and Waldo is wandering the world, and you have to try to find him. Yes, and he I has hated this as a kid, but <laughs> <laughs> so you got to find Waldo. There's, yes, and there's, there's all these other people that look like Waldo, but you can't tell. But which they're not is really which. Waldo, right. and they're all around. It's going to take you time to find Waldo. Right now, let's say I tell you I have found Waldo, uh, but I'm not revealing. I, I don't want you to know where Waldo is. Right. So I know where Waldo is, but uh, I don't want to tell you. But I want to prove to you that I do know. Is there any way without showing me how and where? Right. Okay. So uh, if I just say, here's Waldo, then you know where Waldo is also. Right. And so I've given away the knowledge. So uh, the amazing thing is that we've thought of a way to do this that I, I could explain show with me. this book. Show me. Show me. So okay. if we imagine that I take a very large cardboard piece of paper, much larger than the book, okay? Right. And I cut a little hole in that cardboard exactly the shape of Waldo. And now all you see is the cardboard. Here's the book. Now I put the book behind the cardboard. And then I look through the hole, and all you can see is Waldo. And if, the, if, the, uh, if we could show the audience let's, what I'm seeing on let's my screen try this here. On, yeah, let's try I this on the computer. Um, are we doing this on the computer? Okay. Yes, so Waldo's somewhere in this page. And I now have this big blue piece of cardboard, and I cut a tiny hole. And through this hole, I show you, there's Waldo. Uh -huh. So now you know I found him because you see him. But you don't know if the book is here, or here, or here, or here. And so. I it's great. You share the result with me, but not the way to it. You're maintaining the, um, uh, you're maintaining the process. Yeah. yeah, and this is unbelievable. So in the immutable chain, right. we can put some information that's immutably there, but it doesn't actually reveal who we are. It doesn't give away our privacy. It doesn't give away our data. It gives away a proof that we have something. So for example, using this, you can prove that you have a certain amount of money in a bank account to do a transaction without revealing how much. How much or, You can yeah. prove that you are in a location without revealing 
which exact location. All right. It's really useful, and so we have today privacy coins enabling this types of technology, such as Zcash, Zcash. Monero, and the, the the protocols get very strange names. So one is called zk snarks, for uh, non-interactive zk arguments. snarks snarks yes snarks. It's very okay. snarky. That's commercial. Uh, and, um. <laughs> and then uh, they went on to develop zk starks. And then there's bulletproofs, which are very exciting because they're smaller and faster and cheaper. So right. uh, uh, Monero now implemented that, and they're saving a lot of money in every transaction. And the innovation goes on. So ZK, zero knowledge, is part of the answer to immutability. It's a way to record things that are also useful because right. you can inspect the data and know something, like in our, in our little story there, you know that he knows where Waldo is, or I can know that you have enough money to buy a house, or I can know that you did pass certain customs regulations right. without revealing the details. So we're saving privacy, but still revealing something. It's no, no, it's, uh, it, it you know, sounds like a solution for that, um, and a kind of magic. What else, discoveries to come? Yes, there's a lot of uh, work in zero knowledge because it's so exciting and innovative. Uh, and recently, a new protocol called Mimblewimble was released. Such uh, as Mimblewimble, apropos Mimblewimble, spells Harry Potter. Yeah, they okay. took the apropos name from that. Harry Potter. Yeah. Because it's so magical, and it's, it's a funny name, but... What does Mimblewimble do? So Mimblewimble is a zero-knowledge protocol, and uh, it, it's, it's very fascinating. It's being picked up now by uh, Grin, for example, is a new coin using Mimblewimble. So we're watching for more implementations on Mimblewimble. And keep watching Zero Knowledge. There'll be more and more developments in this space. It's going towards multi-party computation. And I'm sorry for all the huge words. What it really means is I in, only look blonde. Go in multi-party, <laughs> we're, we're really, and people are really looking for ways that your computer could process all the stuff without knowing what it's processing. So it's another ad advantage over the current situation in privacy. So right now, when you're using Amazon or Facebook or... Right. You're, you're Everyone using, knows who you are. But also, you're using their computers. And with multi-party computation, the computer itself won't know what it's processing, but it'll still finish processing it. So the good news is, uh, I don't think your privacy is lost forever. I think this was a temporary stage. We invented you the do. global internet, yes. And we, we enabled all these new and wonderful ways of doing things. And then we abused them. And, and we, <laughs> Somewhat, Some yeah. people abused them and chased you around with your airline tickets or my abandoned cart. Yeah. But people are working very hard on zero knowledge, on multi-party computation, and these kinds of technical magic will be under the hood and they will preserve more privacy. You've spun magic over me, um, uh, Dr. Wahlberger. Thank I want to thank you so <laughs> it's much. It's always good to talk to you. Yeah. So thank you so much for being with us, as you will be next week. Um, uh, and that was the wi Wimble? Mimble Wimble? Mimble Wimble. Mimble Wimble. There Come we go. Time. The Mimble Wimble. Mimble Wimble. Mimble Wimble. Mimble Wimble. Mimble Wimble. <laughs> Block Doc. For now, of course, do not forget to check us out, Block TV, on every social network you have. Facebook, Twitter, Telegram. And, of course, we'll be right back.